We are getting you pumped and ready all this week for this Saturday night's San Diego Gulls hockey game. Our first of several games to air live right here on the CW San Diego. I will be at the game as part of the broadcast team along with the man behind the mic calling the game play by play announcer Andy Zilch. Andy joins us live this morning. Thanks for being here, Andy. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. I am pumped for a game with you. I'm pumped to have a game televised on this station. Yeah, we, we're excited because, um, you know, we can use more hockey games on TV here in San Diego, and we're excited to, to bring that to viewers. And I know you're excited that more people get to, to watch this incredible sport. Well, not only the incredible sport, but uh, also just the product that we have on the ice as well. I mean, we are the future of the Anaheim Ducks, and we've already had lots of players come up from the san diego Gulls this season and already not only play with the anaheim ducks but make an impact with the ducks so you're seeing the future right here yeah some of those guys have gone up and they even scored their first nhl goals right yeah that's right you've had uh, trevor zegers and jamie drysdale each do it on the same night <laughs> and it was ironically enough jamie drysdale's first nhl game a two-point game so that's pretty that's pretty good I, I hear. Yeah, that's a good start into the into the big show for sure. Uh, let's talk about tonight's game against uh, you know Ontario Rain, one of our fierce competitors here. This is an important one, Andy, because the Gulls are an even 500 right now. 10 wins, 10 losses. I mean, you want that moment, momentum swinging in the right way. Yeah, and you don't want to be a 500 hockey club. That's not going to be a winning recipe for success in the chase to the playoffs and uh, the San Diego Gulls had a great start, uh, the best start in club history, but they hit a little downward spiral and a big win on Sunday, their last game in Tucson, will hopefully propel them to make a good stand here in the next few weeks and hopefully on Saturday on, on CW, but also too tonight against the Ontario Reign where no game is going to be an easy game against this team. It's the Kings AHL affiliate. And we all dislike the Kings here in San Diego. So we got to make sure that we take it to them. Yeah, exactly. So um, you're part of the team's quasi bubble up there in Irvine, you know, to keep everyone safe. I mean, you and I chatted on the phone the other day. You're limited on what you can do and where you can go, right? I mean, how bizarre has that been for you? Yeah, it, it's been challenging. Uh, at the same time, it's it's actually not that different, though, because I'm so busy. You know, I, I, I'm so engulfed in this sport, and my job, and I love it. You know, I'd, I'd rather do this than sit on the couch for nine months wondering, what's next but yes there are certain things that i can't go do i can't go to a restaurant and enjoy a meal indoors and i can't go to that local pool party i can't hang out in public so i got to make sure that i'm getting curbside i'm getting contactless delivery i got to make sure that i'm being safe we're all doing this in the bubble so the players the coaches myself and then one other staff member we're making sure that we're being as safe as possible because any exposure could put a halt to our season and maybe things get postponed, but we're, we're making sure that we're doing our diligence. Yeah, and hats off to the team. I mean, that's why they were in Irvine, to be closer to the, uh, right. the NHL club. I mean, they've been doing a great job keeping the players and, and staff safe that, that you've seen, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a reason why we are here is to be close to the Ducks. But the primary reason that we're temporarily here is for safety reasons. We are, we are in a very controlled environment here, and I really like it. And it's a fantastic facility, too. Not that our facility in Poway isn't, but I mean, this is the Anaheim Ducks practice facility. It's gorgeous too. It was built about uh, two and a half years ago or it opened two and a half years ago. It's state of the art and it's making sure that we are in a certain area in the arena that nobody else can get to. So safety was the number one priority and so far it has worked out seamlessly. Yeah, you're referring to uh, five points there in Irvine. It is a really nice uh, sheet of ice there. Um, it's got to feel different though. You're, you're doing these broadcast games. I've seen pictures of you on Instagram before where you really enjoy the crowd being there. I mean, they've got the music pumped through, but it's just not quite the same, is it? No, it's not. And, uh, you know, the first few games I was able to get by just because it was hockey was back and I was just so darn excited that hockey was back. But as we move along through the season, and I've noticed this, especially in my broadcast, I like to include the crowd sometimes on a goal call. Like I'll just keep quiet and the 12,000 that are there at the Chong Arena, I just turn up the crowd mic and just let them roar. And you can't do that. I have to keep talking after a goal, and it's very unusual. And not only that, but, you know, the oohs and ahs after a fight and the sure. bone-jarring hits, and then the crowd just erupting after that. And even during warm-ups, the ambience that's going on in the arena, there's a special energy that the fans bring here in San Diego. And 
we certainly miss that and hopefully sooner rather than later we can get back to San Diego and play with them watching us. Yeah, we have uh, the president of business operations, Matt Savant, joining us on the show at the uh, end of this week here. We'll ask him a little bit about what that timeline might look like. A lot of people are excited to get back to Pachanga. We're hearing about the Padres reopening and everything, and it'd be nice to be fans in the stands again. So let's talk about this Saturday night. Uh, you can watch the Gulls take on the Tucson Roadrunners. Uh, they split with them last week, and you touched on that, Andy. What, what do they have to do on Saturday night to beat the Roadrunners? Well, it's got to be a physical, fast-paced game. It's going to actually translate very well for television. These two teams went against each other a week prior here in Irvine, and it was a feisty game. There was three fights in one period. Before the game on Saturday, there was almost a fight during warm-ups. It's going to be physical. It's going to be very entertaining. And these two teams, in years past, have had a great history of great hockey on the ice. Whether there's fights or not, it's going to be high octane, and you don't want to miss it on TV. Once again, the first game airing here on the CW, March 27th, Andy, as you know, against Tucson. Then the second, April 3rd versus San Jose, April 24th against Henderson. Saturday, May 1st against Tucson, and a road game May 8th against Bakersfield. And you can find the full goals schedule at our website, cbs8.com slash goals. And Andy, we just learned that we're going to be live streaming this on cbs8.com as well as our News 8 app. So there's so many chances for people to watch the goals here in San Diego now. Oh, that's fantastic, too. And I mean, just the, the different outlets. I, I know some people don't actually have a package for television. Right. So every, everybody generally has Internet for the most part. So if you're interested in watching San Diego Gulls, there's another great avenue. I'm glad that that's, uh, that's working out. Sounds good, Andy. I will be seeing you in a couple days. You're darn right. Thanks for coming on, buddy.